Okay, so uh, something I want to cover today um, is this idea of knowing uh, the music that you're playing. Um, in you know today's world where we're rushing around, we've got a lot of things to do. Um, something that's become common practice that maybe we don't we don't think about too much is uh, how much we read music and how little we actually play music. Um, I first started thinking about this <clears throat> in uh, graduate school. Um, I had a teacher who had gone to a symphony and one of the children uh, that was there at the show came up to one of the symphony players after the performance and um, it was her birthday and uh, she asked if they could play a happy birthday. Um, and uh, they said they would need sheet music uh, to, to play it. And, uh, you know, happy birthday is a pretty common song, so maybe that's not um, as common uh, of a of a thing to, to, to see as a classical musician not knowing how to play happy birthday, but it did in this case, and it does in many other pieces, uh, other pieces that you may think that you're familiar with. If you cannot play it by memory, um, do you really know the thing that you're playing, right? And, you know, I started thinking about this too when I joined a marimba band, and uh, marimba is an African instrument. <clears throat> this is Zimbabwe style uh, African marimba. And a lot of that music comes from this instrument called the imbira. And the imbira, it's spelled M B I R A, if you want to look it up. Imbira is uh, this thumb piano type uh, instrument. And when students are learning this instrument, when they're learning the music, they spend the first year um, on one piece, right? And they're not allowed, you know, to, to transition to the next piece. They have to master this piece of music, and so they spend a lot of time with it over that year. They get to know every angle of, of the piece of music so that if they want to start somewhere in the middle you know they just boom they start you know this is kind of like with the alphabet right if you I know a lot of people like you know if you want to start at uh, let's say the letter P right um, you kind of have to walk yourself back like L M N O P Q R S T U V right you have to um, you you memorize the cadence of the alphabet, but maybe not necessarily the, you know, you don't know every single angle, like start on G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, right? Something like that. Um, <clears throat> so same thing with music. If you don't know how to start the piece of music without um, any sheet music, I mean, do you, do you really know the piece of music, right? So uh, this is something that I think can help you stand out in today's world too, where there's so many people playing music, um, there's so many people uh, making things. Um, in a world like that, for you to stand out, one way of standing out would be to actually know the piece of music that you're playing. And if you really know the piece of music that you're playing, then you can add expressivity in a way that you just can't do if you're reading the music. You know, if you're reading the she music and, you know, part of your mind, part of your energy is going toward reading the music. But imagine if you had your eyes closed and you could play the piece of music. What you're doing there is you're really, you're speaking the music, right? Imagine like these words that I'm saying right here, right? I'm not reading off of like some script, right? Um, imagine that if you had, you know, if every conversation that you had to have with someone, you um, had to like read it, right? Like someone was delivering. Like that's, that's another thing, right? Is that when we speak, you know, we're the authors of our, our words, right? So it's, it's, it's nice. But imagine if someone else was writing 
the words that you had to say all the time. That would be very um, uh, meaningless, right? So same thing with music. Like we're just reading other people's music. What if we, sure, we like took their sheet music and we, we learned it, just like we take words and we, we learn those words. But if you really get to know a piece of music, like a Bach piece or a Mozart piece, especially these pieces that, that emphasize the structure of, of sound itself, you've got all these harmonies, uh, things that resonate, notes that resonate with one another. Um, if you spend time really memorizing and not, not so much, I, maybe I shouldn't use the word memorizing even. It's, it's more of you're getting well acquainted with the music, right? You're getting really well acquainted, let's say, with a Bach uh, piece. I'm learning a Bach piece right now, Adagio. Um, it's originally written for um, violin, I believe. And I'm playing it on my C clarinet, so I'm... Uh, you know, it's not written for the clarinet, right? It's got some of these, uh, you know, chord tones that you might play on the violin because you have lots of chords. I'm playing it on clarinet, and so what I'm doing is I'm picking out, you know, the, the notes that are most important, and I'm emphasizing those, right? And, you know, that requires me to go in and really understand the, the structure of the of, of the music. And so, yeah, that's, that's about all I have. Um, you know, try to, if you can, you know, even with a simple piece like Happy Birthday, um, stop reading the music, you know. Get in the habit of picking up a piece of music and studying it. Really getting to know every angle of the piece of music take a little snippet, you know, take a, take a measure or two and play it forwards and backwards, right? Play it uh, really slow, play it in a different rhythm even. Get to know the, the relationship from note to note. And the more you do that, the more you will really know the piece of music in such a way that if you want to play it someday, you just take out your clarinet and, and you just play it right? Like, imagine, imagine that. And imagine that you pick up on some of these um, uh, techniques that composers use to craft their musical pieces, right? If you take time to study these techniques and study the, you know, you'll start to notice repeating patterns, um, you know, like the, the relationship between the fifth and the root, uh, the, the, when you, when you shift from a major chord to a minor chord, you know, why do you do that, right? Like, wh why are we playing the music that we're playing, right? We're not just doing it just to, you know, read um, music. You know, we want to we wanna express music. And, you know, just like what I'm doing here with these words, I know these words, I know what I want to say, so I, I, I say them, right? I'm not reading off of some script. So um, I hope that we can do the same with, with clarinet and with music. Um, so start simple, you know, start with something like Happy Birthday and uh, get to know the piece. Start thinking about, okay, what, what scale degree is this? Is this the first? Is this the second scale degree? And uh, where is it going? Is it, okay, so it's going from the two to the five and then it goes to the three, you know, things like that. Put yourself inside of the the music that you're playing, right? And <clears throat> and then you'll you'll stand out because you know you can express honestly when you're when you're playing the the music. You can express it in a way that no one else can if they're just reading the the music. So uh, that's my tip for for today, and um, hopefully it can um, help you uh, get familiar with with music. Uh, as a as a general concept uh, so hope you have a good day